Hello students, in this lesson we continue learning about the King's Indian defense and more specifically it is time to learn how to play it against the London system. So in this lesson I'm going to quickly go over the plan that I used myself and then I'm going to show you a game that I played recently for you guys to see it in action. Now guys, this lesson number 87 was supposed to be about end games, but many of you have been asking about how to play against the London system. And since I really want you to start getting experience with the King's Indian defense, I wanted to put this one in here for you to get it out of the way and make sure that you can play it. And if they ever use the London system against it, at least you have some plans to, to use it. So let's get started, guys. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. Now, don't forget, if you're new to this course, this is the first lesson that you see on the King's Indian defense. We are doing this on leeches because I want you guys to save it as a study. So learn, study, and that's going to allow you to save it and keep it the way in the future if you need to refresh, if you need to brush up on it, you just access your study, whatever you save today, and you just have to review it quickly. If you have no idea of what this is, go back to lessons number 86, 85, 72, and you're going to learn how to use this to start building your opening repertoire. So with that said, let's get started with uh, the King's Indian defense system against the London, uh, the London system. So if I go all the way back, you're going to see guys that it starts after d4. Remember, I typically don't do knight f6. I'm going to do g6 first, then knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4. And then after bishop g7, the white pieces just go e3. So we have the London system set up. We're going to continue the same way, guys. We castle. And now here, there are two points in this opening where we have to be aware of two deviations or two variations. Number one, at this point, the white pieces could do bishop e2 or bishop d3. Now, the most popular one, the one that I get the most is bishop e2. I think it's better, but don't be surprised if you find people playing bishop d3. So I'm going to talk about both of them uh, a little bit. And later on, there's another point where I also want to talk about another variation. And guys, to make my point, I'm going to use what we've been using for the last few lessons. If I activate this, you're going to see how the top option is bishop e2. So anyways, I'm going to turn this off for now. And one of the reasons why I want to talk about this is because there's one little, not a trick, but there's something here that a lot of people who are not experienced, they have trouble with. And I want to get out of the way. I want to make you aware in case you're not. But also, talking about bishop d3 is going to give you sort of like a foundation on the plan that I'm going to teach you today. So it all starts with the following. Regardless of what they do, we're going to do d6, and this is where you're used to seeing, guys. The fianchero on the king's side, the king's castle, d6, and then after they castle, this is when we have to determine the plan that we want to do. Now, the one that I started doing when I first learned the King's Indian defense was the following. I used to do knight b to d7. Remember, in the Pyrrhics, the King's Indian defense, our main objective in the middle game is to strike the center with e5. So after a move like, let's say, c3, rook e8, you see, I'm not ready to do e5 because they have one, two, three pieces controlling e5. And I have only one and two defenders. So I bring my rook, and now let's say we have a move like knight b to d2. Guys, this is what I was looking for all the time. And many times when the bishop was on d3, I had this move, pawn e5. And then many times I got people with this trick. So I'm hitting e5, so I come to e5 with the tempo, I'm hitting the, the bishop on f4. And then if they take, I take back. If the bishop moves to g3, I have a very nice fork, and I'm already winning a piece. However, guys, and this is what I was saying before. Many people uh, see this, they get in trouble. And I wanted to mention this more for those of you who play the London as the white pieces. Many of my students, they tell me, oh, I didn't see this, this trick, e5 and then e4. Well, it is actually not that effective. All you need to do if you're the white pieces is bishop g5. And that's it. e4 is not that effective because the knight is pinned. So now the most you could do as the black pieces is h6. They give us the pair of bishops. And then they could simply do something like knight e4, they could do queen c2, and they did not lose any material. Now, that is true, guys, but still, you get a very nice game as the black pieces. All you need to do is what you saw me do in lesson, I want to say lesson number 83 or 84, where I was just playing blitz, and in one of my games, I got to a position like this. I just did c6, 
followed by queen c7, and that's the end of it. So rook a to d1, queen c7, and then my bishop gets out to e6, even to g4. This is already move number 13. The opening is gone. You're gonna get a very comfortable position to continue the game with. Now, everything that you've seen so far, guys, I'm sorry, but it's not the plan that I want to show you. This is not the way I play it anymore, but I, I had to show you this for you to understand where everything comes from. So now that you've seen this, I'm going to go all the way back. And this plan, you're going to actually see it after bishop e2. So we talked about the bishop d3 variation, what I used to do, some of the little tricks that I wanted to do that didn't work all of the time, but at least you have some information on that. Now with bishop e2, which is one of the most popular uh, continuations, I'm going to do d6, the castle, knight b2, d7, and now there are two continuations here, guys. Number one, the white pieces could do pawn to c3, which is what you typically see in the London system, or they could do pawn to c4, and I need you to be aware of this. Now, let me go back and let's just take a look at pawn to c3. If I continue with rook e8, which you could do, we're talking about the plan now that I want you guys to try. This is what I typically do. I'm doing this exact same thing as before. Now, there's one move that the white pieces do a lot here. So if you play the London as the white pieces too, and you don't know this move, well, look into it because it's very thematic here. And the move is pawn to h3. So this is a move that you're going to see it. You could see it now. This is move number eight, or you could see it even in moves number three or number four. They just do this move for the bishop to have a retreat square. So if I ever attack it with a knight, the bishop could go back. If I ever do a move like e5, they could go back as well. Now, after h3, notice that they have one, two, three. And I have one, two, and three. However, many times when I first started playing the King's Indian defense, I would get to this position. And since the only plan that I knew was pushing on e5, I would just blindly do the same move without realizing that now they have this little trick. So after they take and I take, there's a pin on the knight. Because now after knight e5, it is true that I have two pieces attacking. But the moment I do this, they could do in-between move, taking my queen, and they deflect my rook. So when I take, bishop takes e5, and I'm down the pawn, and they have a very comfortable position now. They're putting pressure on c7, they're going to develop the knight to maybe a3, and then activate the rook. But the point is, I'm down the pawn, I'm not comfortable here. So if I activate the engine, it's going to tell me that it's point one or 1.1 for the white pieces so definitely it is not a good position for us so let me go back and again guys i've done everything that i told you before except for e5 it just doesn't work and this is when the plan that i really want to show you comes in so after falling for this a few times i had to look for alternatives and this is what i found this is what i've been playing ever since along with another plan that i'm going to show you at some point so what do I do here, guys? This is my plan. I'm going to fianchetto the other bishop. So I'm going to do pawn to b6, and let me just turn this off, with the idea of doing bishop b7. So now, if knight b to d2, bishop b7, and then I'm ready to do e5. So this is the idea. And by the way, guys, many times you're going to see the white pieces. Again, if you play this as the white pieces, many times the white pieces do bishop g3 or bishop h2, even before we do e5. So bishop b7, you might see the bishop just going back, not even waiting for this break on e5. Not a big deal to us. The point is that at this moment, we already are going to do e5 no matter what. Now, this is already move number nine, and the opening is over. We have developed all of our minor pieces, our king is castled, and we're ready to break on e5. With that said, we have to talk about some of the patterns and plans in the middle game. Now, before we do that, I'm going to put everything back and we're going to do it from the very beginning. So repetition is going to help you remember and memorize. So knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4, bishop g7, typical London moves. I'm going to castle. Now, remember, bishop d3 or bishop e2, the most popular one is bishop e2, but even if they did bishop d3, guys, you could do the same plan that I'm going to show you. So bishop e2, d6, castle, 
knight b to d7 i'm getting ready for e5 but remember this is pretty open so after pawn to c3 rook e8 h3 is a very thematic move now i cannot do e5 so i'm going to do b6 with the idea of doing bishop b7 so it's going to be something like this and we get to the same position we had before now many times guys when i get to this point i like to do knight b to the seven we've seen it in other variations where knight b to the seven is very flexible but then after c3 instead of doing rook e8 sometimes i do b6 first it doesn't really matter this is a system you just need to know where your pieces go so now let's say h3 bishop b7 knight b to d2 rook e8 ready to do e5 now what could the white pieces do here sometimes what should you look for in the middle game well a typical plan for the white pieces or at least something that you should be looking out for is a move like a4 so they're just trying to break on a5 if you take like let's say we did a bad move something like this and they did a5 now if we take they're gonna take back this rook that was not active is now active putting pressure on a, in a on an isolated pawn so that's exactly what we don't want the other thing they could do is if we don't take they could even do a6 battering this bishop making us really uncomfortable so there are two plans that you have to know here you could do either pawn a5 hey what's happening here oh yeah so i took back the the really bad move that's not gonna happen so you could do a5 stopping that it's like uh, automatic they're trying to do that i stopped them and then you continue with e5 the other plan that they recommend is a6 with the idea of if they do a5 you're going to do b5 so you avoid that and at the same time you're gaining space on the queen side now guys i'm not going to tell you one is better than the other i use them both depending on my opponent depending on the position what i expect from you is that you try them both and you pick you keep the one that that you like the most one thing to be careful with when you choose this one of a6 and b5 be aware that they could that they could do c4 all right so you need to know what to do this typically you could do the same thing e5 is your move pawn takes pawn takes the bishop let's say goes back you could do e4 and this is what we're looking for in the middle game we're looking for that e4 square sometimes with the pawn and we've seen this pawn in other lessons we've, we've talked about it in the the kinsinian attack which allows us to to gain space on the king side we've seen it in other lessons so you should be familiar with it and it's also offering us now guys support for d3 so these knights could at some point get to to d3 anyways let me go back oh no let me not go back let me do it. so th this move then e4 if they do a move like this c5 the knight moves and then you could do b4 you see you gain space here this pawn is going to be under attack for a long time and they have to be careful with it so this is one way it could go now if i go back here let's say that they never did um, a5 so i did a6 and this is another reason why many people like a6 let's say that now they do something like queen c2 and i go e5 pawn takes pawn takes the bishop goes back e4 knight to d4 logically towards the center now when you do c5 you're going to see that the knight cannot go to b5 so this a6 is going to come handy for that now it might not seem like a big deal to you guys but look if i go back and let's say that they did not do that let's say they went queen c2 we never did a6 let's say i go e5 pawn takes pawn takes e4 and i do this move notice how the knight could go knight b5 now the pawn is not here and this square is going to be really really weak they're going to take advantage of it they're going to probably do something like knight d6 creating a fork so this is one of the reasons why we want to insert a6 now let me go back again and i hope this is not getting too confusing so let's say again that they did queen c2 guys i don't have to wait for them to do a4 to do a6 before i do this break i might want to do a6 or maybe i want to do this and then i want to insert a6 i prefer to just do a6 first that way when i break on on e5 i don't have to wait so i just take the initiative and i continue with that uh, impulse to just do uh, e4 and c5 and so on so you could do a6 let's say something like rook a2 to, to d1 and let me activate this so it's saying it's negative point three so I, like this is the same as saying it's completely even guys but we're not in trouble now top move look the engine is saying e5 
So take, take. Now they're saying, let me see, uh, bishop to g5, bishop to g3, or bishop to h2. Let's say they go all the way back to h2. So now queen e7, e4, these are the top moves. Now if e4, knight d4, you're going to see, you should see pawn to c5. Rook c8, c5, you see. So this is going to be our move, then knight b3, and then from here, guys, you play chess now guys notice that the engine was just uh recommending moves like b5 bishop d5 all of those moves to expand on the queen side now keep an eye also on d3 like let's say we did something like queen e7 getting away from this pin and let's say that the white pieces just do a few bad moves here so we could do something like 95 if they take us well we pick up the pair of bishops our queen is going to be pretty active but let's say they keep doing pretty bad moves i go here a4 this is something that i want to look for that d3 that's something that the e4 pawn is giving us of, of course this is me doing really bad moves the white pieces might fight really hard to not let you do that but that's one of the things that you're looking for in a middle game like this now let me go all the way back guys again all the way back and we got to knight f6 knight f3 g6 london system I'm, i continue with the same thing as always bishop e2 castle castle knight b to d7 very flexible move you haven't decided if you're going to do this combined with b6 or just rook e8 we don't know so h3 rook e8 it looks like i'm going to do this many people are going to just go back many people are not going to that's fine let's say c3 well b6 we know that e5 runs into pawn takes pawn takes followed by knight takes because of this right now even if they had done something like knight b to d2 where we don't have that problem so e5 d takes d takes and they cannot take well even with this plan guys you could just do b6 so let me go back even if they had done knight b to d2 i could do b6 bishop b7 and then break not a big deal okay so let's say they did c3 instead then b6 knight b to d2 bishop b7 and again something like a4 you could do a6 waiting for them to do a5 and b5 if they never do a5 fine because you're going to do e5 so queen c2 e5 we're going to use that uh, attack on the bishop to get to the knight and then we continue to expand on the queen side the knight can never get to it because of a6 so again we talked about it but i like to repeat guys that way it sticks the way you really get the hang of it now if instead we decide to do a5 guys not a big deal we're going to continue with a5 so queen c2 e5 pawn takes pawn takes bishop g3 if i activate the engine notice that it's zero zero point zero is the same thing so they're telling you to go after the bishop sometimes the bishop even goes to h2 but just know this is one of the ideas so you could do queen e7 then i could go to c5 this is pretty much how the game goes so not a big difference if you go uh a6 or a5 just know that since the pawn is not protecting b5 this plan might not be the best one okay so if you just go e4 knight d4 c5 look positive 2.5 so now the knight could go to b5 and you're going to get in a lot of trouble now guys one last time before i show you the game that i told you that i was going to show you let me activate this and let me get to our position one more time just to show you the last thing here um e3 castle bishop e2 d6 h3 um knight b2 d7 castle rook e8 now c3 b6 knight b2 d2 bishop b7 a4 and now here let me choose e5 pawn takes pawn takes and then look here we have all of these games played by really strong players like 2300 2400 so if i just continue for a little bit more let me see oh bishop h2 uh you see we have a game here played by 2577 and a 2571 let me do a5 and let me take a look at this game so if i open it it's going to let me go and look into it at this point again the position is pretty even according to the engine so there you go now if i look at the next move queen b3 right so let me see what the black pieces did knight to c5 look attacking the queen still very even the position let me turn this off um the queen goes to e2 now we have 
point to e4, look, it is labeled as an inaccuracy because now look, the knight is going to go to d4 and notice how after knight d3, they went straight for that square. They didn't prepare that much. And then look, we have rook d1, c5. This is a huge mistake for the black pieces because again, this knight is going to go to b5 and then to d6. They do not have the pawn on a6. So it's very important that you do not mix this up, guys. You don't want to go for e4 and c5 if your pawn is not on a6. So if you already, if you already did a5, you might as well not get to do that. If you haven't done it, you want to do a6 before you do a4 followed by c5. So notice how the knight goes to b5, and then sooner or later, that knight is going to end up on d6. Again, guys, this is a game played by strong players, and they still missed this, uh, this idea. So let me just see a few more moves. Rook e7, knight d6, of course, rook d7. They took the bishop, and then knight e4. So they take the free pawn because now they could pick up on d3. So that was very premature bringing the knight to d3 and on top of it all they used the wrong plan with the pawns because they didn't have the other pawn on a6. I hope guys this is not too confusing and by the way I'm not going to go over this game entirely because you can always go here to list chess for free and you can access the same game. What I'm going to do I'm going to show you a game that I played recently and let me close this and go to chess.com. So this is a game that I played right before I started to work on this lesson. So I just played this blitz game. Uh, I was lucky to win this game. And if I go here now to the analysis, you're going to see how the game started with d4. They're saying it was a book move. So this is just theory. Then pawn to g6. So guys, look, this is my game. This is, I'm not lying to you. This is how I start my games. If they do d4, I do g6. I have explained it before. I don't like to do knight f6 first because they could do bishop g5. So my opponent just went uh, knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4, bishop g7, everything that we have talked about. e3, I castled, bishop e2, you see, uh, almost no one does bishop d3 here. And then after d6, h3, the same thing. This is a move that is thematic here. This bishop now has a retreat square. So everything that I told you, you're seeing it now in a game that actually happened. So after pawn to h3, knight b to d7, notice that I haven't done rook e8. I'm just doing my super flexible move and they're labeling it as a book move. So this is just theory. Now the white piece is castled, also theory, rook e8. Now at this point they're telling me I could have done b6 as well. Actually b6 is the best move, you see? Now to me it doesn't really matter because I know where my pieces go, I know what my plan is, so I don't really mind how I get to it. Now, rook e8, still a good move, then pawn to c4. Now, this is the other variation that I did not tell you about. The white pieces could do c3, and they could do c4 like I mentioned before. Now, guys, to me, I'm going to continue with the same plan. So my next move was b6, knight c3. Notice how the knight never, never came to uh, d2 but it doesn't really matter. My plan is the same. So bishop b7, then the bishop goes to h2. You see, I told you about this uh, as well. Sometimes the white pieces do not like to wait for that e5. They just want to be prophylactic and they put the bishop back before it even happens. So at this point, notice how the, the engine is saying that after bishop h2, uh, the game is even. They could have been a little bit better if they had done queen c2 instead. Now my move, of course, it's time to break on e5. My opponent did a4, so you see they want to make contact with my b6 pawn. Guys, notice how they did not take, and that's fine. But now I have to make a choice. Do I want to push to e4? Do I want to take? Or do I want to do something else that I do here sometimes? And that something else is knight e4. Now, I'm not going to do knight e4 right now, but I just want you to keep it in mind. Now you know that it is possible as well. It's doable in this position. So. Next time you get to a position like this, these are the candidate moves that should come to mind. Taking, pushing, knight e4, or if you've been paying attention, remember that I told you when they do a4, you have to react to it. And you could do a6, that way when you do this, followed by c5, you have that controlled, or in this case, I decided to do a5. Now guys, and notice how they're putting it as an excellent move, but the best move was to take on d4, there you go. Now, why did I do a5? Honestly, 
I like this hole in, in white's position, so I want to uh, control it with my a5 pawn. Um, also, this a6 now, I don't think I'm going to be able to do e5, uh, knight d4, and c5. Right, so I'm giving up on that plan, but to be honest, I think the main reason why I did it is because I'm keeping an eye on the dark square, that b4. And eventually, if this pawn is gone, I could even put my knight on c5. So anyways, after I did pawn to a5, knight b5 quickly, since my pawn is not controlling a6, he's willing to put his knight there, sort of taking advantage of my weaknesses. So after knight b5, knight e4, like I said before, it is thematic. So don't think like this is something that I just made sense out of the position, I evaluated and I came up with a move. Maybe I could have uh, done that, but this is a move that is already in my, in my head. When I get to this position, it, it just clicks. 94 is thematic. Do I do it every time? No. But again, these are just candidate moves that I know it's, it's typical to, to do them here. So anyways, 94, then D takes E5. And now guys, this is the, the moment of the truth. You could take with the pawn, with the knight, with the bishop. Of course, the rook is not a good option, but there's so many choices. Which one should we do? Well, the answer is you're going to, to find that out as you play this more. Sometimes you're going to do d takes, knight takes, bishop takes, and you're going to pick the one that you like the most. I myself in this game, as you can see, I took with the knight. And look, they're labeling it as an inaccuracy. They're saying that taking with the pawn was the right move. So I made a mistake there apparently. Uh, it made sense to me. Then my opponent just took, took with the bishop. Guys, I took with the bishop because if I take with the pawn, they're going to be trading queens and then this pawn falls. So I just went bishop e5, bishop e5, rook e5, and then after queen c2, I really like this diagonal for my bishop. And this is something else. Maybe at, at the beginning when I mentioned this b6 and bishop b7, it looked a little bit weird, but you're going to see that it has some great benefits. You have this bishop on b7, you have a very nice diagonal, always keep it in mind. Maybe you could use it. So after queen c2, I just went knight to c5, Remember what I told you before, when I put the knight on a5, I was controlling before, so now they cannot kick me out. Now, I did that move. First of all, I'm making this available for my bishop to attack the queen, but also now I want my queen to put pressure on g2. So the bishop is going to help my queen get to g5 and then checkmate. So my opponent did rook a to d1, and now I just went queen g5. Guys, very simple plan, very straightforward. I have to tell you, my opponent, maybe he did not play the, be the best moves here, but it doesn't really matter. I won this game. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't really matter because this is move number 17. So the opening, we left it behind a long time ago. He played it well. Uh, I played what I was supposed to do, and I got a very comfortable position. Right now, I'm throwing checkmate in one move, and my opponent decided to do g3. Apparently, the best move was to do bishop g4, but he made a mistake and did g3. Now, at this point, guys, I know that all of my pieces are pretty active except for my rook, so tactics are in the air. Whenever I have my pieces activated like this, look at this diagonal, look at the queen facing the king, look at my rook active, look at the knight, so there has to be a tactic here. And indeed, the move was rook takes e3, because now I know that if they take, I have checkmate. And again, my opponent did not play uh, that well here. This was a blitz game. So after they took on e3, I just did checkmate. Very simple. My bishop is on b7. Not a big deal. Now, they could have done something else. Maybe, let me see, the computer is saying uh, king h2. Well, even if they did king h2, that's fine. I just moved back to safety, protecting my pawn, and I have to be better. Look, I'm winning by 2.49. So again, guys, this is more not for me to brag about how I won this game with a nice checkmate. It is for you to see how you get a comfortable position. Now, I'm going to one last time go over here to Liches. We're going to go all the way back and we're going to wrap up by just refreshing. So d4, knight f6, knight f3, London system. We continue with castling, bishop e2, d6, castle, knight b2, d7. And now after rook e8, I'm getting ready to do e5. Now, if they did knight b to d2, guys, notice that it is safe. They don't have this anymore. So feel free to try this out. Maybe you like this better without b6. I myself recommend b6 first, 
maybe something like e4 actually h3 bishop b7 a4 or anything else that they do i'm going to break in the center if they don't take like uh, in the game that i just showed you fine they, they're just going to move back if they do you take back and now guys we have to deal with this do you want to do a5 do you want to do a6 a5 stops it completely but remember you cannot do this anymore because after c5 they have b5 and d6 okay so you could play with queen, e, queen sorry queen e7 rook a to d8 knight c5 so a5 queen e7 rook d8 and maybe the knight goes to uh, c5 at some point you could do knight h5 and so on or you could do a6 with ideas of doing e4 followed by c5 so guys now i'm going to leave it here uh, i'm sorry if this video was too long sorry if it was too confusing like always we're going to talk in the comments and you're going to let me know what you thought about it now there's another plan that i use sometimes but i'm going to talk about it in another lesson for now just let me know how you feel about this one and i really appreciate guys if you let me know which of these two you like best do you like a6 or do you like a5 so i trust that you're going to let me know in the comments and i will see you in our next lesson